We've reached a point where car companies want to sell us subscriptions, no matter what. But does it really make sense? Or is it just a way to squeeze more money out of consumers? Today, we'll take a look at it. First, we must understand that subscription services in the automotive industry are not a recent phenomenon. A clear example is General Motors with the launch of OnStar almost three decades ago, a service that quickly positioned itself as a success. Initially, OnStar offered roadside assistance and automatic accident notifications, all enabled in the vehicle. This opened the door for other manufacturers to adopt similar services. These systems have expanded significantly, generating great outrage among consumers. BMW, for example, was forced to withdraw one of its most controversial subscriptions due to consumer outrage. The brand had begun charging for the activation of heated seats in some markets, such as the UK and South Korea, a feature that was previously included in the purchase price. This move provoked a strong reaction, as customers felt it was unfair to have to pay for a feature that was previously standard, forcing the company to reevaluate its subscription strategy. Despite the negative reaction to BMW subscriptions, an S&P global analysis reveals that the perceived outrage does not reflect the reality of the average consumer. While some consumers are reluctant to pay ongoing fees for features that were previously included in the purchase price of the vehicle, many value the flexibility and customization that these subscriptions offer. Safety features such as automatic high beams and dashboard cameras have received the highest satisfaction rate. Driver assistance services and connected navigation are the most in-demand subscription features. This can be attributed to the fact that, when incorporated at the time of sale, these features often involve a high upfront cost, significantly increasing the overall price of the vehicle. A subscription allows that cost to be spread out over time, making it more affordable. What do you think about this data? What kind of features would you be willing to pay for? Let me know your opinion. Now, the proliferation of subscription companies has led many consumers to experience what is known as subscription fatigue. But what is this? Subscription fatigue refers to the discouragement consumers feel when faced with a multitude of services and choices. According to a Deloitte study, about 47% of U.S. consumers feel overwhelmed by the variety of choices, making it clear that more does not always equal satisfaction. Despite interest in various content and services, a growing number of users are expressing disinterest in adding more subscriptions to their lives. This poses a crucial challenge. How can automotive companies stand out in a saturated market? This dilemma arises in a context where automotive companies are trying to transform themselves into more technological entities. This change is critical as the vehicle's operating software must function correctly from the start. A key element of this transition is the technical, organizational, and marketing capacity of automotive companies to emulate those that have pioneered the subscription model. To facilitate this transformation, several automakers are forming strategic alliances with technology giants such as Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Within this strategy, many manufacturers have opted to abandon Apple CarPlay in favor of a more integrated approach with Google, allowing them to develop their own apps and offer familiar Google products such as Assistant, Maps, and Play Store. However, the recent problems GM has faced with its all-electric vehicles and its high-volume software highlight the difficulties that remain in this process. Despite these challenges, even if connected car owners do not renew their subscriptions, car companies can gain valuable benefits in the form of data and user feedback that can be critical for future product development and personalized marketing. Of course, increased connectivity in automobiles also raises concerns about data security and privacy. OEM should ensure compliance with all relevant regulations and be transparent in their data collection practices. But this is clearly not the case. In March, the New York Times published an article about how automakers work with data brokers who sell driver information to insurance companies. In addition, a Mozilla Foundation report last year, titled, Cars are the worst product category we've analyzed, 
highlighted automakers as aggressive collectors of personal data compared to other technologies. This is in addition to the recent Ford patent where they add ads inside the vehicle, which would allow some benefits for consumers. However, an abuse of privacy. Here is the video where we talk in depth about this case. Now, as vehicles become more software-centric, automakers see a significant opportunity to monetize features that can be enabled or enhanced through software updates. Since subscription services provide a steady revenue stream, as opposed to traditional one-time vehicle sales. Instead of relying solely on vehicle sales, which is a sporadic revenue stream, manufacturers can generate recurring revenue through services that, depending on the consumer, they may or may not value having. 